Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. See somebody's leaving the house back there. <laughs> so this is a video that I have actually talked about making. And I have it on my mind to talk about because I get a lot of questions about this topic in my homesteading group. It's a regular, regular old day out here, okay? We're working, I've got supper cooking, you're trying to make all these tummy friendly meals these days. And uh, just got we got stuff everywhere. It's you know it's just spring on everybody's homestead. Everybody is asking the question: How do you make your farm predator proof? How do you make your coop predator proof? How do you? How do you? How do you? Okay. Well, let me bring you into reality really quick. A lot of folks have problems with possum, raccoons, coyote. That seems to be a pretty fair evaluation for most people. Then you have cougars, bobcats, bear, etc. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you right, hawk, Doo -doo. hawks. I'm going to tell you right now that the number one problem, no matter where you are, if you have people living, even if you're city, country, if you have people, even if you necessarily can't even see their house, their dog is your number one predator. Dogs in general are going to be an issue on your farm. Your dogs are going to be a problem alone enough on your farm. If you've got a hunting dog, if you've got uh, particularly a hunting dog, uh, anything that has a high prey drive, um, you know, things that go and retrieve, uh, all of these things are going are gonna to go after something on your farm, potentially. Whether it's yours or whether it's theirs over there. Did you hear that? Okay. So, we've got somebody way over yonder on a uh, property over. Um, I don't know what they're, 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 I thought they were target practicing, but it sounds like some fireworks. Well, so here's the deal. So, I'm out here and I've got Mama Silky and Baby Duck. Just for about, you know, doing a, a it's a beautiful day, doing some free ranging, baby ducks getting in the water. So I, you know, I'm out here, I'm going to go in and cook dinner. And I told my oldest boy, I said, you need to go, if you don't mind, go out there and just, whatever you're doing, take what you're doing out there and just sit and, and babysit them. <laughs> babysit them. Because they're not in a contained area. They're just right here, literally, underneath my carport, okay? Right off my porch, next to my house. They're not out yonder, way over there, up the hill or down the road. They are 10 feet away from my house, in the shade of my carport. And I hear my, I haven't, I haven't even poured the, the, the uh, chicken broth into the bowl, I mean into the, the stock pot yet. And I hear, mom, mom, mom. So I, hey babies, look here. So I hear this and I come running outside. The neighbor's dog is standing in my carport sniffing the duck just walked right on over just came out of nowhere lucky for us this dog is probably 15 16 years old and can barely walk i think it got scared of what it's hearing over there and so therefore it's ran but that's not the point the point is even with you being outside look at this sweetness supervising this little bit of sweetness right here, in the blink of an eye, it's just like having a toddler, okay? You know, it's like you're sitting in the den and the baby's playing in the floor and you're fine and it's doing something with its little people or you know what I'm talking about? And you get up and you walk just, just into the next room which is open to see the baby and you turn around for like 15 seconds or something and before you know it, catastrophe. Looky here. So, a lot of people ask me about free ranging. Well, this is a situation of supervised free ranging. And I, my gut instinct was, okay, I'm going to go and start supper real quick. Probably take me 10 or 15 minutes. They'll, they'll, I'll just leave them out here. And I went, no, I better not do that. So, I told my son, I said, hey, come on out here and just sit with him for a minute. Here he comes. He's sitting right there. 
Mom, Mom, Mom. So he got the duck. There was no problem. The dog, lucky for us, is much older and super non-aggressive. It was scared to death of what's going on. They came here and said, oh, we're just scurrying around. So if you're going to have animals, you have to understand, regardless of where you live and regardless of what you think, you have a predator problem. You have a predator problem. Neighbors' dogs, we've got this dog that runs up and down the road. Um, and, you know, I have to constantly keep watch on it. That's why I also have dogs on the front of the property. Because whenever it's going by or whenever we see it, if it does something, um, and it's, it's, a, it's somebody way over yonder, and on occasion it'll get out. And the thing is, is people have said something, and, you know, it's still, it, it's never been aggressive, but it's a dog. And so we have to beware that, of the fact that other people's dogs, even by accident, can be on your property. Your dogs can get out and be on other people's property. It is owner's responsibility. But it's also owner's responsibility on your property. I, I got into a uh, discussion uh, with a lady who had these, she had Americanas and she had some really nice breeds of chickens. And the neighbor's dogs kept coming over, she says, and kept killing her chickens. And she and I said, Well, why are they why is it killing your chickens? She said, Well, I let them free range. And I said, Well, stop free ranging your chickens. And her response is, Well, it should be the it's the neighbor's fault. Okay, yes, I agree with you. Um, they shouldn't be doing that. Yes, it is, and I have the right to free range. You have the absolute right to do free range on your property, obviously, if you have no restrictions, and that's up to you. But you're going to learn real quick that regardless of what you feel you should be able to do, I feel that I have spent too much time and too much money and too much effort with these animals to just let them go free willy out here and to not be knowledgeable of the fact of even, yeah, I have the absolute right to do that. Um, tell that to the neighbor's dog. Tell that to the hawk. Tell that to the bobcat that's roaming, that is big, is big as a small lab roaming around over here. At any given moment, predators show up. Uh, and for those, and she said, and I've heard other people say, well, the predators we have only show up at night. Folks, I have seen a possum as big as a pot belly pig right in the middle of the smack middle of the summertime day okay so just be aware that you really 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 have to keep an eye on your animals i know people don't like to hear that stuff because they want to be because a lot of times people don't want rules and they don't want restrictions and even if you don't have restrictions you should be aware that you constantly take a risk because the fact still remains if you have ducks if you have poultry uh, chickens or ducks quail whatever though that is a high they're on the lowest of low on the predator scale and just about anything is going to want to pick them up like i said lucky for me so i've taken the little old dog back over there you know it, it this has only happened like twice since we've been here so it was a, it was a, an obvious uh, rare moment, but you need to be aware. So my gut instinct, our gut instinct today was smack on. No matter how predator proof you think you are, at the moment you turn your back, just like with that babe, that toddler, they can come out of nowhere. Simply out of nowhere. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Oh, 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 I'm gonna film. It's in the water. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I'll talk to you soon. I'll show you the baby. I'll show you. <laughs> right back with Mama. Of course, right back with Mama.